Melissa, is that these two teams are both coming off a loss, and you want to be playing good basketball as you head towards the postseason. It'll be a little tougher for Texas A&M getting into the postseason without one of their leaders, Jordan Jones, again with an ACL tear in the Missouri game on Thursday. And right out of the gate, LSU comes swinging. That is Deshaun Harden picking up the start here on Senior Day. LSU is Knox running the point. Go ahead. LSU is going to pick up with pressure. I expect them to do this quite a bit in the game because Curtis Knox is not as familiar running that point guard position under pressure. They will make her make decisions. Curtis Knox, sophomore from Humble, Texas. Scored 12 points with eight rebounds, three assists. After Jordan Jones went down after the first 15 minutes, really, of the game versus Missouri on Thursday. And this is the biggest change you will see. Texas A&M is starting this game in a zone. They don't play a lot of zone. It's not their primary defense. But because they don't have depth at that point guard spot, they can't afford for Curtis Knox to get in foul trouble. Harry Blair in his 12th season with the Aggies has his team sitting at number 25 in the RPI. His team on his way to making a 10th consecutive appearance in the NCAA tournament. This team, of course, won it all back in 2011. Daniel Ballard knocks down the 15-footer. Daniel Ballard is knocking down that shot. She is dangerous. Because Texas A&M is running that zone, they're going to have to hit the mid-range shots to open up defense. Neither one of these teams really shoot the three. They are last in the SEC in three-pointers made per game. Sheila Boykin there, intercepting that pass. Moncrief, high. Acheria Day pulling down the rebound, and a jump ball is called. And there's a look at Nikki Caldwell in her fourth season with the Tigers. for national championships is both a player and assistant coach at Tennessee. Team has taken their lumps this season with six newcomers, but still, as Charlie Green has them today, they are the last four in for the NCAA tournament. What a job Caldwell has done getting this team in position for the NCAA tournament after playing all of the non-conference without Danielle Ballard. And you talked about the three-pointers, Lachina. They can hit them when they need to. Sheila Boykin knocking it down. A rare sight for LSU. But it all helps the offensive flow. Deshaun Harden all alone. And this is exactly what Nikki Caldwell said she needed from her team after the back-to-back -back losses to Arkansas and Ole Miss. Got off to some slow starts there in those two matchups. Show up on the stat sheet on the defensive end. You see Jordan Jones making her way back to the bench. She has traveled with the team. But you're absolutely right. Melissa, she is the best in the SEC at assists, but that doesn't really tell the story of what you miss without her. It's her leadership, it's her defense. She sets the tone for this team. So other players are going to have to step up. And Gary Blair said Courtney Williams is once on the leadership in the bench. That's a little look at what Texas A&M has done this season that has made them successful. They go down low to Hillsman for the bucket. And Kyla Hillsman has really turned it on, the freshman from Chicago, Illinois. Over the last six, six games, is averaging eight and a half points and almost nine rebounds per game. Took her a while to come on, though. This is her time to shine right now as Gary Blair has made the decision to go with the freshman. Danielle Ballard at the free throw line is really the biggest reason why LSU is in this position as we head towards the NCAA tournament. I don't know if there is a more dominant guard during the stretch of SEC play in terms of the effect she has had on LSU. So Curtis Knox draws her first foul. <laughs> LSU is dropping back into a zone. We will see them play, in, I think, a variety of defenses. They rely heavily on their matchup. Nice move by Acheria Day, just cannot finish. Gary Blair telling us that Acheria Day is going to have to play 35 minutes. He said, I need her out on the floor, her presence, but really her toughness on the glass. As Texas A&M got hurt in that area when they last played LSU, even though they came out with the win. Acheria Day was a bright spot in the last matchup on that end. 
Roseman pulls down the rebound. Courtney Williams trying to knock down her first bucket of the game. Will go to the free throw line instead. So keys to the game, and so far we've seen exactly what LSU wanted to do offensively up 11-4. Texas a and limiting their foul trouble. That's why they're in the zone at the point guard spot. They don't have depth. And then keeping Bowden and Moncrief off the glass helps to limit LSU's transition game. For LSU, offense from the defense, picking up in that full court, press, picking up in their three-quarter court, whatever it is, getting turnovers and getting offense, and then Courtney control. They have to make sure they limit the touches and the scoring opportunities for both Courtney Walker and Courtney Williams. Both of those players lead Texas A&M in scoring, averaging 14 points per game, and Peterson picked up the last foul for LSU, and she takes a seat on the bench. Danielle Ballard through traffic. Jump ball call. Ball stuck between the rim and the backboard. And I like the aggressive move by Danielle Ballard. The reason why teams play zone is to keep you out of the paint. Well, if she can get into those creases and have success in the lane, that forces Texas A&M to have to do something different. And how about that shot? Ray Jean Moncrief. Pretty back step. Great elevation. We are talking about one of the best athletes in the country with Ray Jean Moncrief. Obviously, going out with injury towards the end of last season, which hurt LSU's NCAA tournament run, but she has bounced back extremely well. Three turnovers so far for Texas A&M, and LSU making them pay. The Tigers lead the SEC in steals per game. That shot well off the mark for Knox. One difference with Curtis Knox is she is more of a scoring point guard where Jordan Jones was a facilitating point guard that could score. An opening there for Bethel. She could not finish, and down on the other end, Kyla Hilsman still has not gotten up from that last play. And now finally a whistle. So Kyla Hillsman, very slow to get up here, and that could be big for Texas A&M. That Coach Caldwell wanted to do in this game offensively, they have done shooting 55% so far in the early going. There are a few different factors that work right now for LSU. It's senior night. Their seniors gave them a good boost early. They are coming off of two losses, and Nikki Caldwell understands the importance of these wins. Right now, Charlie Cream has LSU in the NCAA tournament as one of the last four in. Well, you don't want that to change. And a win like this against Texas A&M can really boost your resume. And that was the first turnover for the LSU Tigers here today. And then hitting pay dirt with the bucket. Like the deficit, 13-8. The communication in Texas A&M's defense usually relies heavily on Jordan Jones. Well, Courtney Williams, you see, talking a lot in the scheme of this zone. And Gary Blair said she will be the one to have to lead. Ballard shot won't fall. By the way, Hillsman still has not come back into the game since she went down before the commercial break. In for her now, Jada Terry, part of that three-headed monster down at the five position between Jada Terry, Hillsman, and Rachel Mitchell. Three-quarter will not fall for Courtney Walker. Courtney Walker has struggled from the field as of late. In the last couple of games, she has not hit double figures. And as Gary Blair was mentioning to us, teams are really making it difficult for her to get in a comfort zone. SEC is very good defensively, and they've been able to limit her, limit her recently. Coach snaps up ahead. Though the pass long. And here's the injury to Kyla Hillsman. Comes down. down for the rebound. Yeah, just comes down. Looks like something happened on that left leg. And she is on the bench. Has she took off her shoe and since then has retied it. She's not getting tended to or anything. So we'll see if she's going to return. And she's playing very well right now and has kind of in the second half of conference play for Texas A&M. That is the shot 
that Texas A&M is going to give Danielle Ballard. She's so dangerous off the bounce around the rim, so they're going to force her to consistently hit that mid-range shot. Ballard is a cheery day. That is her first. Jenny Deemer checking in the game for Ballard. Give her a rest. Sheila Boykin also comes out. And Jones in for the Tigers. LSU is trying to screen the top of Texas A&M zone to get their guards open for shots. That time on the screen is a foul call. It's an offensive foul away from the basketball. Call on Ann Jones, her first. LSU picking up in a 1-2-2 two, two with Bethel on the top of that press. Uh, Blair thought he would see that pressure. He certainly did. But Courtney Williams all alone underneath, and that's what you give up. And that's great to see Texas A&M attacking that pressure or that, that press without Jordan Jones making good decisions. Three-pointer up and good for Deshaun Harden. Deshaun Harden has all kind of family and friends in the building for her senior day game. Two triples for LSU. Team that doesn't shoot too many three-pointers, but knocking them down here today. And on the other end, Courtney Williams getting it done very nicely for the Aggies. That's the execution we were talking about. Notice the cross-court pass by Courtney Walker. You want to beat that press with the pass, not put it on the deck, and that was perfect. Texas A&M can continue to do that. That would bode well for them. Curtis Knox fires mid-range. No. A battle there for the rebound. Curtis Knox has been impressive so far here today. Now, she's very athletic. She definitely can shoot the basketball. But what she does lack that Jordan Jones perhaps had is that leadership and being more vocal. And that could potentially be an issue here today because Harry Blair's got to call the sets for her. Jordan Jones just knew what to run. That comes from experience. Tony so Williams called for the push. 12-23 remaining. In the first half here, LSU up six after a very quick start to open up this ball game here on senior day. It's also alumni weekend, and so a lot of former players in the house as well. That was a foul on the three-point shot, so Rayshon Harden is going to get three opportunities at the free throw line. And again, with Texas A&M coming out in that zone, Harden has been a weapon from long range. And that's why the hard closeout came. A 34% shooter from outside, 35% from the field this season. Nikki Caldwell told us today that they would not have won, gotten as far as they did last season without the services of Deshaun Hart as the transfer. Happy to see her finishing up her career in a positive way. A loose ball picked up by LSU, trying to capitalize. Jenna Deaver knocks it down, and LSU can't miss. And here comes that pressure. Foul called 8-0 run, though, for the LSU Tigers. By the way, Harden, who has been the catalyst here today, already with 13 points. Foul called against Jenna Deemer. That is her first. Deemer normally is exclusively a three-point shooter. But she knocked down a shot right around the mid-range area. Courtney Walker called for the travel. That is the sixth turnover for Texas A&M here today. But Deshaun Harden lining it up here on senior day. We have in seven teams for the conference. Again, LSU potentially the last four in as of today. And a victory here today would go a very long way in helping make that a reality for Nikki Caldwell and company. In Arkansas, you see right there, included in the field. They're playing Missouri. 
And Missouri has won their last three, including beating Texas A&M. What do we say? LSU can't miss here today. It doesn't matter where. They're knocking them down from the floor. And Deshaun Harden, she is on fire. Harden with 16 points. And Texas A&M is not a team that typically gives up three. They are actually the best in the SEC in three-point field goal percentage defense. You draw the defender, and then the late chase there by Courtney Williams. Doesn't take long for Deshaun Harden to get that three off. Three triples for LSU, all of them coming at the hands of Deshaun Harden. And you said it to China. Three-point field goal defense is where AM is number one, not only in the SEC, but in the country. It's struggling here today. It's also where they struggled Thursday night versus Missouri. Lost that matchup on a last-minute three-pointer by the Tigers. See right here, Courtney Walker desperate to make something happen. Use that arm to displace the defender. And Gary Blair is simply trying to figure out what he needs to do to keep his team afloat because missing Jordan Jones is not easy. And so he comes out of that zone. LSU gets hot from three. Now we'll see what they do here to adjust. They're in a man-to-man -man right now. So Walker picked up the last foul. Also has four turnovers in this game. 11 minutes remaining in the first half. Streaking to the basket. That was Harden trying to go strong. Thought about kicking it out to Bethel. And in there. Go baseline to Jada Terry and both teams trading turnovers. running the point. Offensive foul is called. Sakura from Japan. Had two points, two assists, two rebounds, and a steal in the last matchup versus Ole Miss. Did not get the start today because of senior day here in Baton Rouge. Nikki Caldwell calls her one of the hardest workers she's ever been around compared to, to, to Tamika Ketchings. There's actually a film crew here from Japan doing some taping of Rita Hill in preparation for possibly her being a part of the women's national team there when they host the Olympics in 2020. First in the LSU history from Japan and first Japanese there to play women's basketball in the SEC. And there's that film crew. Could be a very good game for Rena Hill and the LSU Tigers. Some pretty good footage for them. I said if they were all the way from Japan right now, <laughs> they must love Serena Hill. Takes resources to send the whole crew out here. Ten turnovers for Texas A&M. And on the other end, there, there's a shot for that film crew. And what is so impressive about what LSU is doing right now is they're winning with contributions across the board. We're not just talking about Ray Jean Moncrief and Danielle Ballard. They are getting scoring from multiple players. 16 already from Hardy. 11 LSU points off of Texas A&M turnovers. Send it ahead to Echiria Day. Rena Hill was there. Super Tuesday on ESPNU continues with a double dip at 7-4. General Marcus Page in the number 15 heels face a road test against the Yellow Jackets. Then Daniel Howes and the Aggies square off in the Swamp versus Billy Donovan's Gators. Super Tuesday presented by Creek LED Lighting. Coverage tips at 7 on ESPNU, the home court of College Hoots. And Kyla Hillsman in the game looking okay on that leg. Coming off of her first career double-double. Since inserted into the starting lineup, Kyla Hillsman has had three double-figure rebounding games. So you, you mentioned it earlier, she's much needed for this team. And that's been a piece that so far they've missed as well when you look at the fact they're down 14 points. Uh, that all goes back to what Rena Hill just did. Great awareness by her to see Sheila Boinkin wide open as the defense collapsed on her. Aggressive off of the bounce. 
LSU shooting over 50%. This is rare territory for a team that's playing against Texas a and Known for their defense, known for limiting and forcing offenses to do things they don't want to do. And LSU has not been in a great offensive flow as of late. Three seconds on the shot clock here. Offensive foul is called. The charge against Perti Knox. Aggies are really out of a rhythm. Hard, difficult to see from, from that angle. But oh. Imagine there's displacement there by the offensive player. A beautiful move by Ray Jean Moncrief has the fans here at the PMAC on their feet. Can't miss Tiger. Has 16 points. Knocked down three triples here this afternoon. And it really changed the complexion of this game because Texas A&M felt comfortable coming out in the zone because LSU is not a big three-point shooting team. Blue Devils exactly. average three a game in, during the season. Hillsman using that size to go up and over. She draws the foul. Texas A&M sitting at 25 in the RPI, projected five seed. They were a four seed prior to that Missouri matchup, and then again just lost that one late in the game off a, what else, a three-pointer against Missouri. Very, very good, always have been under Robin Pinchton. Texas A&M lost a lot in that game. They lost the game. They could have gone undefeated at home on their, on their home court. They lost Jordan Jones, and you're right. They lost some space in the seating. So they're trying to get all that and their swag because they're missing their leader. Even with a victory here today over LSU, they would need a little bit of help to lock down that four seed in that double bye. Ball out of bounds, and we'll stay on this end. About to talk about what's on the line for LSU. A victory here today would clinch the four seed for them in that double bye. It could go as high as a three seed if they win, and some other things happen with the remaining games here today. Jumper, falls, 16-footer for Sheila Boykin. Sheila Boykin, the senior. This is Nikki Caldwell's first four-year recruit. Followed her here from California. Nikki came to LSU from UCLA. A great story of a young woman who dealt with sickness and adversity since coming to LSU, but she has been courageous. in the SEC. The RPI of 25 again got bumped from the four seed to the five seed after the loss to Missouri. Had some quality wins over Kentucky, Duke, DePaul, and Arkansas. The worst loss though came Thursday versus Missouri, a game that they missed their leader, Jordan Jones, who was injured with an ACL tear and meniscus tear in that game. Struggled to finish strong and are struggling here today. Nine seconds on the shot clock here. Knox looking for some help. Up to Williams. Skip pass. Okay, they're trying to go low underneath the Kyle Hillsman, but shot clock violation. And this was a concern for Gary Blair. He said, we're going to have to try to score in transition because once LSU gets their half-court defense set without Jordan Jones, without the use of the three-point shot, it's going to be hard for us to score against that zone defense once it's packed in. So they have to look to start their offense on this end of the floor. Danielle Ballard draws the foul. The foul's going to be on Daniel Bauer, junior from Memphis, Tennessee, averaging 13 points per game. This after missing, of course, the first 14 games of the season due to a suspension. Now she's leading her team in scoring, even after missing all that time. Has scored 10 plus points in 11 consecutive games for no, LSU. No, it is the score in steals, in assists, in rebounds, in SEC play. She has been fantastic. I think she's one of the best guards in the country. And, you know, we watched her 
make a magical run last year in the NCAA tournament. Right. The impact she can have on a game immediately. It's her strength, Melissa. She has got amazing strength. Then she's left-handed, which makes her difficult to defend. Now she averaged 23 points per game and 14 rebounds per game in those three NCAA tournament games last season. Matchup zone here for LSU. Nice move by Cortez Knox. Ballard pops it. This is where Texas A&M needs to try to strike and score in transition. Don't let us shoot it. Set up. Wide open look for Williams. And Williams knocks down the three. Courtney Williams can just flat out score the ball. The caller, C. Will. Love her game. She's long, has a nice looking shot, can create a three with lockdown, at least the four seed with a win and some help, they could potentially lock down the three seed. Texas A&M needs a victory here today and some help to lock down the four seed. I'll tell you who I don't want to see. I don't want to see Ole Miss if I'm, if I'm headed to the SEC tournament. I don't want to see Missouri. They have both won three in a row. And I don't want to see Auburn because Terry williams Roy has her team playing hard. Don't sleep on that bottom half of the league because they are fighting here down the stretch to get wins. Turnover. Patrice Knox lost a handle on the ball. Now LSU with an opportunity to capitalize. And we'll send Akila Bethel to the free throw line as she draws the foul. Ma major responsibility on the shoulders of Curtice Knox in this game. Trying to get a handle on the ball. Her teammates have got to look out for a little bit, set a little screen, make life easy for her in the open court. They've got to look to help her out a little bit and leave some of that, that pressure. First foul for Hannah Hillsman in this game. Game, LSU has been very good offensively here today in transition in their half court. Also very good at the free throw line, though, as well. Perfect. Eight for eight. And that's the first miss here today. And the careless turnover. Wide open look and another three-pointer falls for Deshaun Martin and Lachina. When you're in the zone, you're just in the zone. And she's in the zone. 19 points for Deshaun Harden on the other end. Chelsea Jennings getting the bucket for the Aggies. Some of these turnovers are under the rest by Texas a and but some are not. And that's too easy of a score there by Ray Jean Moncrief at the rim. But you can't let losing Jordan Jones be your excuse to fall apart. Man, I understand how poor she is at this juncture. But this team has some experience. They've got juniors that have been in the war, senior. Five minutes remaining, eight seconds on the shot clock here for Courtney Williams, who makes a nice move. The junior from Houston, Texas. And it's got to start with more from Courtney Williams and Courtney Walker. Those two players, in my opinion, have to step up, do more, step outside their comfort zone. Jerry Blair said that. It's all about how everyone else accepts their new role, not just how Cortese Knox performs. Allen looking for some help. Five seconds for Ray Jean Moncrief. And she really had to heat that one up. How about that? The other Courtney gets the ball. It's Courtney Walker with the bucket. So now Texas A&M finding a little mojo here, shooting 60% from the floor here in this game so far. Really good turnovers, that's killed them. You're right, they are shooting. But with 15 turnovers, you don't know it because you don't have as many opportunities to shoot the ball. They've had 15 field goal attempts and 15 turnovers, which has been the problem here today. Courtney Walker. Yes, loves that mid-range shot, and that is where Texas A&M is so good. Jeez. So this team is looking around. There's no Jordan Jones. 
how are they going to respond? Lots of time left in this game. LSU has come out with a punch, but hey, we got a lot of basketball to play. He's not there. Now what do we do? Nine seconds on the shot clock here. Six seconds. Raging Moncrief hesitated. Strong to the hole and gets it to fall. That's not quality defensive effort. Great move by Moncrief. Those are the shots that Texas a and normally does not give up. Those men, turnaround shot, up and over. High percentage look. I like this freshman. She's got good hands. She's physical. She's worked her way into playing shape. Made herself a factor here late in the season. Ballard from the elbow. Here come the Aggies. Walker, Jennings fires. No. Fight for the rebound. Well, we saw Deshaun Harden getting it going. And how about Raging Moncrief, the sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Florida? Not going to doubt here today that is one motivated young lady here on senior day and alumni weekend for the LSU Tigers and in SEC play LSU only averages about three three pointers a game they've already got four and Harding is four for four so that changes totally changes the complexion of your offense and how teams can defend you and certainly unexpected by Texas A and then we talked to Gary Blair on the game plan here today under two minutes remaining, Kyla Hilsman at the free throw line, a 53% free throw shooter. By the way, Texas A&M back in this ball game, a lot of turnovers, but they did hit seven of their last eight field goal attempts. And that is where they need to go, is to continue to score the ball, take their time. They've got capable scores out here on the floor without Jordan Jones. This is not a high assist team, though Jordan does lead the SEC in assists. They've got players that can create off the bounce. you got to take it in your own hands. Ballard draws the foul. And then it needs to be 10 2 1 here. This Near the halftime break. Ballard is 72% free throw shooter. Played 30 minutes, scored 14 points, had six rebounds, two assists, and a steal. Versus Ole Miss. And you know, in the last matchup versus these two teams back in January, it was just her second game back after that 14 game suspension. Played limited minutes. Gary Blair knew he would, was going to get all of her here today. Didn't quite see that in the first matchup in College Station, but getting it here today. Yeah, she takes a lot of pressure off of her team because she can make plays late in the shot clock. They needed additional ball handling. She's an outstanding rebounder on the backside of their zone, which gets them into transition. She is just a weapon that they needed on the floor. Jennings knocks down the shot with the shot clock winding down. And that opportunity will be there. Jennings has done a good job. She's come in the game. She's not rushed on the shot on the baseline against that LSU defense. You'll get looks. You got to knock him down. Excuse me. Yeah, you got to knock him down. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Deshaun Harden didn't even have her feet set on that one. It's like she's just got a straight up connection to the bucket. You've got to get all the way out on the shooter. Walker hits front iron. By the way, the five triples for Harden is a career high. 33 seconds remaining in this first half. 13 seconds on the shot clock. And Peterson fires. No. And they're going to call a foul underneath the basket. Deshaun Harden is really camping out. They're in a man-to-man, -man, but just that little fake. You see the fake in the lane? Well, that was enough to shake off Courtney Williams, and Williams hasn't been able to get out on, on her. I've made multiple threes by Deshaun, and I think Williams has been there in most situations, has got to extend the hand. On the 
one situation here for Rachel Mitchell, a junior from Houston, Texas. 60% free throw to the ball game for the Lady Tigers in the three in the Gila Bethel. Both of these teams right now. Offense not a problem. But China LSU shooting 51%. So far in this first half, Texas A&M shooting 60%. Again, the issues for Texas A&M have been turnovers, 15 of them in this first half. And she has seven steals. Boy, they have gotten after it defensively. Good game plan by Nikki Caldwell to say, you lost your starting point guard. We're going to attack you with our defense, make you uncomfortable. Four seconds remaining on the clock. Hill fires, won't fall, and that will do it for the first half here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. LSU of 47-35 off to a hot start, and as you can see here, the most points scored, 50%. But the difference in why LSU is down in this game, turnovers, very problematic for the team. 15 in that first half. They did clean up towards the end of that first half. No turnovers in the remaining five minutes, 43 seconds of the first half of play for Texas A&M. So we'll see what the second half provides for the Aggies. So Texas A&M got a chance to go into the locker room, take a deep breath. The emotion of senior day sometimes can overtake a visiting team. Have they settled down, and will they get the needed scoring and take care of the ball in this second half? Williams inside to Patrick Hillsman for that high percentage shot. Nice look there by Hillsman. LSU comes out in a zone, but because Texas A&M has some size, they can go over the top with that pass against the defense. By the way, that was just the second offensive rebound for Texas A&M in this game. And that's a problem. I mean, they averaged 12 second chance points a game. They only had two in the first half. That's something you can control. Get to the glass. Five seconds on the shot clock here from long range. No connection there for Deshaun Harden. Kyla Hillsman underneath with the shot. LSU's in the zone, and Danielle Ballard is supposed to cover on that back side. She comes over but takes a gamble looking for the steal, and Hillsman is strong, goes up for the finish. Jerry <laughs> Day driving. Cheerio Day cannot finish. I don't think we heard the name of Cheerio Day enough in the first half. Only two points for her, four rebounds. And those are baskets you have to have. When you get all the way to the rim, you need to finish. Danielle Bauer slicing her way through the defense. The foul should be called on Two ranked teams highlight the Thursday night showcase on ESPNU at nine. The number 22 Rams Havoc defense look to stymie the Wildcats. Then Dalon Wright leads the number 13 Utes in a road showdown against the Cougars. VCU Davidson at nine. Then Utah Washington State at 11 Thursday on ESPNU, the home court of college hoops. <laughs> Good decision. Ballard thought about driving through and then created some space and knocked down the jump shot. I mentioned this earlier, but the best part of the scoring for LSU in that first half is Danielle Ballard was one for six, and they still scored 47 points. That's their leading score. Ballard with 10 points, 12th straight game for her with 10 plus points. Caldwell told us she wanted her team to play a full 40 minutes of basketball. We saw 20 good minutes of basketball in the first half. Can they finish? Another missed opportunity in the paint by Texas A&M. Good execution against the zone, though. I like the way that they are isolating the post in the middle. Post player holding position and getting the ball. Found an opening. Moncrief. 
No. Knox up and over, trying to get to Hillsman, and a great save by Ann Peterson to keep it from going out of bounds. Moncrief kicks it out. Ballard. Reset the half court here. Blinken. Short. Second chance opportunity. A rare miss for Deshaun Harden. Right here. Moncrief kicks it out. Ballard. Reset the half court here. Lincoln, short. Second chance opportunity. A rare miss for Deshaun Harden. Right here, Texas in the mirror. They strike quickly. That's what they need to look to do. With this on the other end. But they got to get a little more ball reversal, I think, against that zone. They're getting good looks. But LSU adjusted the last time down. Ballard knocked the ball out of playing position on the back side. They've got to make that LSU defense work deep on both ends. Get, get to that second, third side. And then chipping away at this LSU lead. And he's down 10 now. The largest lead for the Tigers was 20 in the first half. trying to get around Curtis Knox. So Texas A&M working on this deficit here, down 10 to the LSU Tigers with 15.40 remaining in the game. And the numbers and the difference, you see the shooting percentages there for the first and second half of that first matchup, but how about today? Much better and much improved for both of these teams shooting well over 50% in this matchup. Well, you saw the 0 for 8 for LSU from three in that game. Well, today they already have five, so that changes the game plan into how you want to defend them. And the other key to that first matchup was Curtis Knox and Jordan Jones were a huge part of that second half push. Courtney Walker and Williams both limited to eight points apiece. That Williams. Number one, Courtney Williams gets it down, 13 points for her. No problem scoring the basketball here so far today. I'll tell you this, I know it's early and she's still got some time left as a, as a junior, but Courtney Williams is going to be a really good WNBA player. She puts a little bit more muscle on she has got moves for you with length at 6-1 and look at courtney williams the junior and the big key for her was to stay out of foul trouble she fouled out two matchups ago versus florida had four fouls in the missouri game look at her numbers here she's six for seven from the field so she hasn't missed very often we need to get her some more touches and she's got just the two personal fouls so far here today. One thing she has done is turn over the basketball. And she can take care of it. She's doing good things. And a hole with a wide open look. They are going to put the ball in Courtney Williams' hands at the, at the head of this offense for Texas a &M. Ball lost by Courtney Walker. Ballard with the steal. This is an area where Williams has been challenged defensively. Ballard, jumper, won't fall. By the way, the last turnover from Courtney Walker was her sixth here today. Both Courtney's having some trouble taking care of the basketball. Yeah, Courtney Walker's been really wet and rattled. Only two for five. She did not get into double figures her last two games. Sometimes for a score, how did point guard get you the ball is so important. 
and that might be four fouls on Curtis Knox. The foul's going to be on number 11, Curtis That is her fourth foul. That's her fourth personal foul. And that is their starting point guard here today. Well, Super Tuesday on ESPNU continues with a double dip at 7-4 General Marcus Page and the number 15 heels face a road test against the Yellow Jackets. Then sharpshooter Daniel Howes and the Aggies square off in the Swamp versus Billy Donovan's Gators. Super Tuesday presented by Cree LED Lighting. Coverage tips at 7 on ESPNU, the home court of College Hoops. So you look at the adjustment here, what Gary Blair is going to have to do. This was his worst fear. This is why they started out in the zone, because now Curtis Knox has four fouls. LSU has gone after her. They have really attempted to get her in foul trouble because of missing depth. So Jennings will come into the game. Chelsea Jennings. And we'll see how they adjust offensively. Rena Hill. Hit the deck hard. She's up and okay. That's her first personal foul and the first team foul. Here's a look at it. Yeah, she was not in position to take a charge. Shoulders were not square to the ball handler. She was not a legal defender. And so Courtney Walker is going to take on that point guard ball handling position. On the down low. By the way, Harden now with 24 points in this game. That is a career high for her. And you're looking at a player, Deshaun Harden, that has had quite the journey to get here. Starting off her career at Oklahoma, then going the JUCO route, and then ending up, excuse me, community college, and then ending up here at LSU. Well, she has definitely done some really good things in this program. Doing some really good things here today. A cheerier day in this move. And yeah, they need to get her going. Yeah, good isolation. You know, one thing Texas a is doing in the second half is getting more isolation on the backside for their post players, more one-on-one. -on -one. Cheerier day is so physical, not just defensively, but getting those buckets down low as well and trying to get those high percentage shots for Texas A&M. She may not have the size, but boy, she works hard. That's a good contest. The book back though it does go down. Danielle Ballard with 12th leads this team in rebounding. Great presence on the glass. I'm gonna call the offensive foul. Rena Hill didn't get it the last time, but got it this time. So with now two point guards on the bench for Gary Blair. Players are put in situations to do things they're not as they're not accustomed to doing, and I'm not sure if Rita Hill got established there. Rita Hill with the work ethic, as Nick Caldwell described it, it's Mika Ketchings. I said, are you, wait, did you say Ketchings? <laughs> she did, and she's looking pretty good here today. And a nice bucket underneath by Akilah Bethel. Some patience by LSU offensively to make that happen. LSU is all over Texas A&M. LSU playing like a team, knowing they are on the cusp, on the bubble of getting into that NCAA tournament. And right now trying to show this committee they deserve to get in. Up 59 points on top of LSG. And playing, as Gary Blair told us today, he knew what he was going to get playing for their postseason lives. And it can't say enough the job that Caldwell has done. This team was 6-6 six and six in non-conference and had some tough losses. I will be honest, I wasn't looking and thinking NCAA tournament the way things were going for this program early on. But again, with the return of Ballard, with Moncrief really getting her legs under her coming off of that injury, that knee injury from last year. Good baseline shot there by Walker. Gary Blair takes a timeout, talks to his team, and says, okay, you're going to have to handle the ball here. And Ballard just too good. On the other end, count the basket. She will go to the free throw line when we come back. Both teams trading shots. 61-45, the Tigers on top.
shot like that calls for a post-game celebration. Share what you love <laughs> with who you love. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. They're great. It's easy to create my beautiful website with Wix. Guys, let's go again. If only everything in business was as easy as Wix. Go to Wix.com and create your stunning website today. It's free. Tuesday on ESPNU. The high-flying Tar Heels need to boost their tournament resume. He hits a three. They face a tough road test against the upset-minded Yellow Jackets. Couldn't stop the dog there. Marcus George is hot. Who look to sting the heels? North Carolina, Georgia Tech, Tuesday at 7 on ESPNU, the home court of college hoops. From the very minute you have this idea that you want to be in business, you need to have that card. Presentation is everything because they're not only first impression of you, but now you're handing them this product that really is kind of going to define your business in their mind pretty quickly. You want a very thick, a uh, card that feels nice in your client's hand. I think it's nice to have a choice because sometimes you want a glossy card, but for other projects, I don't want necessarily want all that. Your business card is a reflection of you. It should say exactly what you want. With a range of design, stock, and finish options at Vistaprint, it will. Get 500 business cards starting at just $9.99. Just enter promo code TV500 at Vistaprint.com. That business card, when I make a connection with someone, has to be phenomenal. It has to be elegant and invoke all the things that Diamond stands for. Just that professionalism is going to make you, as a business owner, more successful just right off the bat. Vistaprint.com. 61-45, the LSU Tigers have led from the get-go on top of 12th-ranked Texas A&M with 11.38 remaining in the ball game. Danielle Ballard will go to the free throw line, but she has been a catalyst here as well. 14 points for the junior. She's moved into double figures in the second half, and she's just got a variety. She can pull up mid-range. She's left-handed. She gets on the glass. I call her the bully because wherever she wants to go on the court, she goes. And you're looking at a player who... You know, Nikki Caldwell be, will be the first to tell you, rough upbringing in Memphis, really had to make some decisions to push herself here to college. She could actually be the first person to graduate from college in her family, and she could do so as early as the end of this summer after her junior year leading into her senior year. So more about what she has done off the court as well as a person, and her teammates love her. You know, obviously she's had some bumps in the road, but has grown through them, and we're just impressed by her perseverance. And going back to that 14 game suspension to start the season, very much missed Danielle Ballard was by this team. And you talked about the non conference slate, how bumpy it was for LSU. That was a big reason why. Yeah, absolutely. Having her to steady the ship, and her teammates respect her so much. They depend on her, rely on her energy. They're so young. I mean, look at what they lost from last season. You look at the year that they are, maybe junior and senior, but they haven't played a ton of minutes. So she, she held a lot of that experience in her hands. Peterson. Got knocked down that loose ball. Hands inside. Nice move. As Tavarsha Scott Williams. The senior from Louisiana. And the interior has been there for Texas a and in the second half. Points in the paint. They have found a way to get high percentage looks inside, which has to be a concern for Nikki Caldwell. Lots of time in this game. And when you get high percentage looks like that on the possession, and you take care of the ball. That's the key. Because they're shooting it well. But they're also taking care of the ball here. Good defense so far. Five seconds remaining on the shot clock. But down it goes for Ballard. Too easy. Too easy. Williams got some help off the glass.
The reverse underneath. Akilah Bethel. That's how you can get it done. Courtney Walker now playing the point guard for Texas A&M, initiating the offense. This team is two point guards down, one in foul trouble, one out for the season. Trying to make adjustments. Walker ran into a wall. He's down deep into the shot clock. Now Ballard to Hill. Hill, a no-go. And trying to go inside to the Varsha, Scott Williams. And on the other end, remember this? Akilah Bethel, how, do you, how can you forget it? It was the Nolan pass by Rena Hill that I'm most impressed with. Good dish to the baseline. That needs to be on the highlights. Hill, the bounce pass on the interior, and the finish on the reverse by Bethel. That's a nice combination. I'm sports in the top 10 thinking right now. You know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Hill's got that Japanese film crew here and putting on a show. And what you won't see on the stat sheet from Rena Hill, the number of charges she's taken, defensively just being tough and getting down in the stance, making things happen for her team on that end, the all-out hustle. Won't go down this time for Harden. But another opportunity here for Texas, excuse me, for LSU. Now we're looking for an opening. Takes the shot. 17 footer won't go down. The ball is going to be in the ball game. That's her second personal foul and the fourth team foul against the Lady Tigers. So Chelsea Jennings comes out for Texas A&M. Walker running the point now. Williams, yes, on the move. How great of that do she have it? Elevation, size, efficiency in the paint. This performance by Courtney Williams, despite the score, has been fantastic. Williams with 19 points with all scores for Texas A&M. And back to forcing that outside shot from LSU. That is when their defense has been at their best, when they're forcing Marquise and Ballard to take it from outside. And Jones knocking down the bucket for the Tigers. Look at Caldwell and LSU trying to keep her foot on the accelerator here with seven minutes remaining in the ball game. They have led from the get-go. Mitchell off the mark. Out of bounds it goes. LSU will have it. It is alumni weekend out here in Baton Rouge. Tamika Johnson, owner of the LSU and SEC women's basketball record for our current. That we all did that. Impact players here today. Hard, a career day. And then Danielle Ballard, of course, doing her thing. Absolutely. I'm extremely proud of the uh, Hardy. Uh, they showing. She's showing up and showing out for senior night. She's making it, making a good impact for her, her last regular season game on the floor and I'm happy for it. And Danielle needed to play like that. She needed to step her game up and bring it to the next level because she's capable of doing it. And I think she's, she's proven it tonight. Nick Caldwell talks a lot to his team about the foundation that was built before these young women got here. You were a part of that. The Final Four, putting LSU on the map. What was it like to be a part of, 
all of those historical moments. I think it's great, but I, a lot of, I, for me, I don't really like to accept the credit like that because there's so many people that paved the way before I got here. I think we were just doing what others did, and we was paying it forward, and I hope that this group do the same thing, and to, to allow the girls that's coming behind them to follow into their footsteps and, and to do even more than what we've done. So I, I'm happy to be a part of that. Know a thing or two about basketball here at LSU. Also with the Seattle Storm and the WNBA, a 10-year veteran. We'll look forward to watching you this summer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tanika Johnson joining us. She will represent the Lady Tigers at this 2015 SEC Women's Basketball Tournament held in North Little Rock, Arkansas, as part of the 2015 SEC Legend Class. Maybe you can hang around with us and maybe watch a few minutes. What did you just see there from Ray G. Moncrief? A great steal and a great finish. Uh, we, we've had some trouble with uh, finishing around the basket a little bit this season. I'm happy that we're finishing as well as we are today. Now, one thing I know, you're very active in the community with the Hope Foundation. You've written some children's books. Talk about what you have been doing in the community and that end of your work. Well, a lot of people look at us and they only see the end of what we've done. They don't realize that we were once in the same position that they were, that they were in. So I try to do all that I can to let use my basketball experience and to let, allow kids to know that there is more to life and that I started right where they were And I use my story um, to try to help them to see that they have better choices uh, in life. And, can anybody tell your story better than me? That's right. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy and honored to be able to do that. I know Bob Starkey is excited that he is a part of your board, of your foundation, and all that you've done. Of course, he was a coach on that 2005 team, heading to the Final Four that they're offering, to, that they're honoring today. Absolutely, and I absolutely love Coach Starkey. He's a dear place in, in my heart for him, not just because of the stuff that um, he's that he does for me for the foundation, but because of who he is as a man. And he cares about each and every one of his players. And uh, it doesn't matter if you play for him at what school, he's going to keep in contact with you because he's just as passionate about the game and people. Well, he, and you can't find that very He, he can't be happy with the defense he's in today, no. <laughs> no, not at all. But listen, I, you shoot it. I told them today when uh, they saw me hugging Coach Starkey, I said, I love Coach Starkey, but I bleed purple and gold. Please don't get right. it. <laughs> He might have some purple and gold on underneath of that suit, I it's believe. Little, man. He knows everyone in the building. As he came in, everyone was hugging him. And obviously, he was a big part of all of that success, 13 seasons here at LSU during all those Final Four runs. Absolutely. And that speaks to him. That speaks to the volume of him as a man and his character and what he's left here. And uh, it won't be forgotten at all. Sam Jones at the free throw line. And the second free throw. 70 to 55 LSU. Again, extending their lead. It's like Texas A&M creeps back in, and then LSU continues to try to slam the door on him. Nigga, you have mastered the point guard position. What is Texas A&M going through right now, trying to play without Jordan Jordan, their starting point guard, and their backup? It's tough. Like, you can tell that they're missing a, a, a key part to their their offense because they're a little discombobulated. And I, I had a, an opportunity to watch them play early November with Jordan being healthy. And they're definitely a different team without him on the floor. And it's a, it's a tough position to be in because now all the players have to step up and do things that they weren't used to doing. So they'll, they'll have a little time to get it together before the tournament and make their run as well. So you mean Simone and the Big Seal couldn't have handled everything without you on the floor back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, no. But I, 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 but I tell you what, I wouldn't be leading the SEC, no LSU, without the two of them. So uh, it, it worked hand in hand. They had to make those assists work, right? <laughs> Absolutely. We've obviously talked a lot about LSU. How much have you followed just the SEC in general with the potential of seven teams getting in to the NCAA tournament? According to Charlie Cream, of course, we still got some games left remaining here today. I think it speaks volumes of, uh, of the SEC because a lot of people are sleeping on it. They don't think that the talent level is as strong as it once, it once was. Um, but I think these girls work hard, night in and night out, and it, it, it's proven with seven teams being in the tournament. Tanika, we have a lot of young women probably watching this game from all levels. Elementary school. Good shot by Scott there, who is starting to heat up on the offensive end for Texas A&M. But what advice would you offer young women that would like to one day compete and be in your position? 
to continue to work hard. Uh, surround yourself with people that believe in you, you just as much as you believe in yourself. And never allow anybody to tell you that you can't do anything. I'm 5'3". You know how many people told me that I can't do everything that I've already accomplished? Believe in yourself. At least give it an effort. Put forth the effort to try and do it. And if you if you try it and you fail, then you know what? You can say, I at least try it. If you don't, then you'll be mad at yourself for the rest of your life for not even attempting. That's absolutely right. Well, I cut you off short earlier. We kept you a little while longer. Glad that we did. Good conversation with you, Tamika Johnson. Again, the record career assist leader in the SEC and for the LSU Tigers. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. 3.30 remaining in the game here. LSU in the driver's seat, 72-57 on top of the number 12 team in the nation. 14 from the field. She's made all her free throws. Five for eight from three-point land. That's the kind of spark you need this time of year because this team has really been two-dimensional in terms of their offense. Now, Harden has contributed, but in spurts, it's really just been more about Valerie Moncrief, so she's giving them an extra oomph. So again, the Tigers on their way to locking down at a minimum the four spot in the final SEC standings, which would give them the double bye in the upcoming SEC tournament. And we checked in on Mississippi State in their game versus Ole Miss. That one in hand for the Bulldogs. Though there was a potential for LSU to take that three spot over Mississippi State if they came out with a loss here today. Either way, they're getting a the double bye. Very small lineup in the game. For Texas a and with Courtney Williams at the four. Lincoln short, working with two seconds remaining on the shot clock. You look up and down the stat sheet for LSU. They've got Moncrief with 10, Harden with 26, Bauer with 16. This is really the story of this game. 35 field goal attempts by Texas A&M. So, yes, they're shooting 63% for the field, but the turnovers have killed it, coughing it up 24 times. As Courtney Walker gets to score, LSU with 11 steals. So that's really been the issue, holding on to the ball again with, the, with those point guard issues. But, hey, they're still, they're only 11 points down. There's some time left in this game. And it's 24 Texas A&M turnovers to so LSU's seven. That goes down for that one. That's just muscle. That's all muscle. She's got him. 210. Left to go. Tigers trying to hang on here at the end. And, and, and the end of the game, that's sort of been the problem the last two matchups that LSU has lost to Arkansas and to Ole Miss just didn't have enough in the tank according to Nikki Caldwell and trying to have a little bit left over here today. This is help. Look at Ballard. Just muscles her way. Once she gets down that low, she can create an angle because she's so strong. She can hang time. She can shoot over taller defenders. Making a way out of no way. And she hits the court hard. And who else? Dejon Harden spotting up. In transition, waiting for the pass. Harden was wide open. The way that this LSU offense works, they attack the driving lane. Ballard attacks them, Moncrief attacks them. Then they need floor spacers. And that's what Deshaun Harden has been today. She has really been a floor spacer. And Peterson is a floor spacer when she's hitting shots, but they don't. They haven't had that efficiently and consistently this year. That's where they've struggled on offense. This is an LSU team that prior to the last week or so for the loss to Arkansas and Ole Miss had actually done pretty well in the SEC. Their loss is coming twice to South Carolina, the top team in the conference. They lost to Tennessee, but they beat Kentucky. They beat Mississippi State. And Harden goes this time. For the easy shot on the layup. And the collision here midcourt between the Bethel the and the Chelsea the Jennings. Game. As we take a look at LSU's tournament resume, and the SEC game. tournament is still upcoming in some games there. Quality wins. 
Art of Plenty in the SEC. Their strength of schedule. And look at how they're performing here in this game. This bodes well for them. They didn't want to lose another one and go on a three-game losing streak headed into the SEC tournament. So this is big. But they're in good position. And they're going to get to 10 conference wins here. It's been a very long time since anyone in the SEC has hit 10 conference wins and had any trouble getting into the NCAA tournament. Another team. Arkansas. Jimmy Dykes in his first season. That team sitting... In the 40s in the RPI, they have done really well down the stretch, and that's the team that Nikki Caldwell and company lost to in the last two matchups, and she said that's a pretty darn good team. Yeah. So again, seven SEC teams, like that, perhaps the magic number in the NCAA tournament, according to Charlie Cream, and LSU certainly helping their cause as the last four in. as ours, Ole Miss and Mississippi State. Mississippi State, the Bulldogs coming out on top in that rivalry matchup. And this is the latest SEC standings. With the update, so it looks like Mississippi State is in good position there to land in that top four. And LSU looks like they're going to be joining them. And the top four teams get a double bye. And that, that matters. There are teams that can get a bye, and then the double bye is ultimately what you want. Allow these teams to get a break, rest some legs, and be fresh. You know, the SEC, for the SEC tournament's hard enough on its own. I mean, without having to play an extra day. Of course, Gary Bird would love that to help them continue to make the necessary adjustments without Jordan Jones. They don't have that luxury. So Harden comes out of the game, a standing ovation here at the PMAC, 28 points for Deshaun Harden, the senior here on her big day. Also added one rebound to the cause. Raina Hill just got lost in the shot clock. Still dribbling with it winding down. That's a shot clock violation. One by one, Nikki Caldwell is taking her seniors out of the game. Ann Peterson, of course, is a redshirt junior, but status unknown in terms of her return next season. So she was honored today. Boykin Shield Boykin has already taken a seat, as has Deshaun Harden. All of them to a big round of applause. By the way, that last turnover for LSU was just the second this half. They've got eight total before the game, 24 turnovers for Texas AM. That was the killer. Danielle Ballard will hold on to it as time winds down here on Senior Day. And the LSU Tigers, Nikki Caldwell and Gary Blair with a quick chat after this one. As the Tigers down the 12th ranked Texas A&M Aggies.